Hi everyone, I am Milan Yanashov and now you are watching the short promo video of my introductory network visualization course. If you have ever wondered how to work with networks and graphs, how to visualize them and how to highlight hidden connections, then you came to the right place. In this course, throughout four chapters, we are going to overview the basics of network science and network theory. Then we are going to overview the practical ways of visualizing networks and then we are going to go through several hands-on exercises on how to visualize existing networks, how to break down existing visuals into tiny pieces, and how to reconstruct network visualizations using Gephi. So, if you want to learn about networks and visualization, this course is for you. See you there! To close this course, I decided to visualize a network which I've never visualized before. So, just today, I was working on mapping out all the Python libraries that I have been using for my Python tutorials. And then I built a network of the libraries based on how often two libraries were used together and also connecting to the libraries, all the sub-libraries of these libraries, which I have been using very often. So I just finished producing this network in Python and now I'm going to read it for the very first time in Gephi. So it is called pythonpackages.gexf. So it looks like in this network there are a hundred nodes and almost 800 edges. So let's say OK. This is how it looks like after reading it with the random layout. So what I usually do first, as you have seen before, is to apply the force atlas layout. Ah, not the tolerance. I meant to set up or tune up the scaling to a hundred. And now the network is lost. So I create a random layout again and then I go back to Force Atlas and apply a more gentle scaling. Yes. So here it is. All right. So now what I will do to make this network look better is to dissuade hops, increase scaling and add some gravity. Now I will run a modularity detection and colored nodes based on that. Appearance nodes color, partition and modularity will be the att attributes I use. Let's see how this color plot looks like. And also with black background setting this little light bulb here. I would prefer if it had a nicer more circular layout. So that's what happens when we normalize the edge weights. That's a bit wild. Let's decrease the scaling and let's Switch off the gravity. Ah, yeah, I didn't switch off on the gravity. That's why I didn't have the circular layout. Okay, now let's go back with the scaling and let's switch off the edge weight normalization. It's not that bad. Funny, it keeps spinning, whatever. Let's increase the edge weight influence, but not that much. However, increase the gravity so things are getting more packed in a circular shape and increase the scale so we stretch it out a little bit. Okay, now we can increase the node size appearance, nodes, size, let's do just degree, or no, let's do weighted degree, come back to the right to the statistics tab, run average weighted degree, close, go back to appearance, nodes, node size, drop down menu weighted degree, and let's size from 5 to 50, to 15, to 100, because this was too small, okay, this looks alright, but we have many overlapping nodes, so let's do prevent overlap part and save the graph to make sure that... So now what I did is that I overwrote the Noble Network Visual Breakdown. Don't worry, it's already uploaded to Udemy. So I should just say save as and call it 16 Python packagescafe Then we click on this little triangle, click on node size, select the node size scaling and use the slider to decrease the node label size. So now what I would like to see is, well, larger nodes, larger font size on the smaller nodes. So let's increase the lower limit for the node size a little bit and decrease the upper limit and do some label adjustment. Remember layout, drop down menu, label adjust, run. And now let's save it and then go to the preview and refresh. Okay, now we have a fresh start. 
I will go for a dark background as always. I will on the top left kill the border, decrease opacity, show labels in smaller font size and refresh again, then rescale edge weights from 1 to 10. We can go up to 1 to from 1 to 25 because this is too thin for my taste. I will increase opacity now, decrease, increase the max maximum weight to 50. I want the largest, strongest connections to be emerging in a very striking way. Let's go back to 100. Okay, now it's better or more to my liking. Then let's change something about the labels because now we can see much. Now the labels are written out using the black default color. So now I will do something new. It is called outline. Here in the no labels section, you can set its parameters. So if your outline size is set to two, then you see there is this outline layer around the labels, the, around the texts. And now set the color, clicking on this, these three dots here to be the parent. We, this way, the outline color around the node label, we have the same color as the node itself. Let's have a larger outline, but with a more pronounced opacity. Let's set it to 70%. Yep. Yeah. So now here we have this network, but I'm not completely happy because the small nodes, small labels are still very hard to read. So I come back here and I switch to node degree for sizing the nodes, so it will have a smaller spread, hopefully. We can go up to 80 with the largest node. Yes. And now let's see how it looks like. Yes, now it's somewhat better. Let's decrease the outline size. But it's super busy and packed here in the middle, so let's adjust the labels. So here the B is under M, so let's increase the size because, yeah. We have something like this in the preview, so now I do a label adjust, and I will also do some expansion to give some air to the network. Yes, now it's somewhat better, but I'm not sure if this node labeling works. Let's try something else. Let's use white or nearly white or off-white color instead, and let's switch off the outline. I don't like this that much either, but here there are some overlaps again here in the top, so let's go back here, label adjust, that's interesting. This should be adjusted, let's do it manually. Let's try a different color palette, maybe it is very striking neon green, makes it difficult to color the network. Come back here to preview, no this is not the best either, so let's generate a new color palette. Let's see the PIMP version, very curative. Okay, this has some nice color contrast especially in the geospatial Python libraries. Let's see the preview. Okay, this this reads all right, actually. This reads all right. Let's see if we have some outline. This reads okay. Okay, I think that we got the network. So this is how it looks like. I'm not sure I would normally include all the labels because that makes it so busy and crowded. But here I want to show every single Python library. So I decided to keep all the library rephrase so I decided to keep all the labels and at the end we were able to adjust the colors in a suitable way. And the only thing that is left here is to export the graph, which I will do using the usual method here. And then just think about the meaning of the different colors. By the way, I know that this is not a spatial analytics course, even though I have a couple of those on my website. But I can tell you that the different colors very well describe different Python functionalities. So that's how it's going to be. And again, thank you very much for following this course. Now I will just say farewell in the final video and then get ready for the next course.